This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access, the link posted in the first comment. And all of those stars appear and their eyes roll around. That's exactly how I felt. The Acme Anvil had indeed crushed me into a pancake. Only it wasn't funny. The floor fell out from underneath me. I couldn't hear anything anymore. I couldn't think. All I remember is getting up as they were talking. Their voices were coming through like the adults on Charlie Brown, where you don't make out what they're saying, just a bunch of wah, 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 wah sounds with no description, enunciations of anything. I can't hear what they're saying, but I see my feet moving. I just started walking. I walked out the office, got onto the elevator, and continued off the lot across the street to the liquor store. And I just didn't stop. I kept going down Sunset toward the 101 in my $3,500 John Paul Smith suit and my Gucci tie, and I had no plans to look back. As I approached the freeway, a white van pulled up alongside me, and the sliding doors opened. Kerry Washington, Darby Stansfield, and Katie Lowe are all looking at me with tears in their eyes, telling me to get in the car. To see those faces and hear them telling me that and knowing all that was going on, it was too much. And you know, you can tell someone to get in the car, but if they're not ready to get in the car, if they're not ready to break th these curses out here, there's nothing you can do at that point. That day was truly one of the worst days of my life. That feeling, that pit inside my stomach, it's a feeling I can never forget. And here I am dealing with this, and I wasn't even on drugs at the moment. I was the moral leader of the team, and I dropped the ball still because I couldn't let this toxic relationship go. I was more comfortable in toxicity than I could ever be with peace. Peace made me uncomfortable. I liken it to a stray dog I met in Puerto Rico while filming. One of my co-stars ended up taking the dog we found running around base camp starved and homeless in the middle of the jungle. That co-star took the dog home that night and got it warm and a new doggy bed and placed it by the fireplace with a nice treat. But oddly, I was told, the dog grabbed the treat and ran outside on the patio and laid down in the pouring rain, enjoying the treat with no care of the torrential downpour coming down on him. He was so used to being in the jungle with no bed, no fire, no cover. He felt at home in the storm. That dog was me. How do you show up for a show when your real life could compete with the script? If I wasn't already fired, I wanted to quit. And if it wasn't for Carrie, I would have. Just finish out the season, Columbus. Don't quit the show, Carrie told me that day. We are all here for you. For me? How? This is your show. No, we're all here for you. You don't get it? You're not getting it. I need you to have my back. Just stay here until we finish the season, and then we can decide... What do you want to do after that? So I did. Even though I wanted to pull a Dave Chappelle and just vanish, I had to get back to work. In hindsight, that was probably the best thing for me that day. Who knows where I'd be if they didn't come get me. They got me a hotel that night to make sure I was safe, and the next day I went to work without incident. I wish I could say that that was the end of my chapter with my wife, though. When she called me the next day, I had already put together all the pieces. I wanted to see my daughter, though. And I wanted to hear my wife's side of the story, against my better judgment. I didn't want to break up a family or the system that we had in place, you know? My life had order, as dysfunctional as it was. Of course, I wasn't okay with it, but I found my okay at the bottom of the bottle. At the end of the season, Shonda told me she wanted me to go to rehab. I know you don't necessarily need to go, but based on everything that's happened in the last month, the network is saying either you go or you definitely don't have a job next season. Honestly, I was thinking, Shonda, I don't know if I want a job next season. Columbus, listen to me. Go to rehab and get yourself together and come back. We're going to be here. We're going to love you and support you. We're your family. So I went. My time in rehab was amazing, honestly. I was reluctant in going and apprehensive, to say the least, to be with people I thought were in a worse condition than I was. However, in the end, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I was truly beginning to understand the core of my substance abuse. The real whys. After 30 days of extensive therapy, group sessions, in-depth character analysis, I felt I was ready to return to my life. The whole cast wrote me this great letter while I was there and sent it to me before I got out, which was just before we started rehearsals. I was welcomed back to the scandal set with open arms and love and grace and passion and non-judgment, and it was wonderful. I did have a family. They all delivered on that promise. I'm eternally grateful for that because without them, it could have been exponentially worse. But what I failed to realize was that just because I did the work and I began to change doesn't mean the world in which I live changed along with me. When I got with my now ex-wife, I was just so in love, our lust. For once in my life, I felt like I was going to finally have peace. I'm going to make a family. It's funny because I used to tell my mom, it can't be this difficult to be married. Why do you keep getting married? 
it can't be this hard. You keep introducing us to men and then they're gone. This is why I don't want to get my hopes up anymore. Man, 